Hey, can I ask something? What habit would you choose to form immediately if you could? Would you include fitness in your daily routine? Would a soothing stretch take the place of your nightly snack? Maybe you'd want to read for 30 minutes every morning. Keep a daily blog or start bossing and impress your dentist. Whatever your goals, you can't deny the power of habits. So, surprisingly, the fundamental step towards long-term change requires developing routines rather than habits themselves. But what's the difference between routines and habits? Most people believe the two can be used interchangeably. Welcome to Money Talk, where we discuss tips on making money. And for this video, we are going to talk about making a new habit stick. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click that notification bell to receive updates and be the first to check out our latest videos. So a routine and a habit cannot be used interchangeably, you get me? This is a widespread myth. So according to Near Isle, the author of Indistractable, How to Control Your Attention and Choose Your Life, and it usually results in disappointment. When we fail at forming new patterns of behavior, we often blame ourselves, he said, rather than the bad advice we read from someone who doesn't really understand what can and cannot be a habit. According to A.L., a routine involves a series of actions that are frequently and purposively repeated. A habit is a behavior carried out automatically or with little thinking. Before a behavior can ever become a habit, it must first be a routinely carried out action. Many of us want to skip the routine stage. Which is the problem? This, according to Ayal, is because we believe that developing habits will allow us to put difficult or unpleasant jobs on autopilot. It's indeed reasonable. Routines, as opposed to habits, are uncomfortable and need conscious effort. It can be challenging to maintain routines at first, such as getting up early to run every morning or meditating for 10 minutes every night. On the other hand, our daily lives are so entrenched in habits that breaking them feels weird. Think about not drinking coffee with breakfast or without cleaning your teeth before going to bed. Avoiding them can even make you feel unpleasant. If you've already developed these behaviors as habits, so now, to attempt to turn a routine into a habit, you should take the following steps. So, the first step is to set your intentions. It's important to remember that not all routines can or will develop into habits. Even if they are quantifiable, some things are too difficult to change without a lot of thought, consideration, and work. As a result, activities like playing an instrument, keeping your apartment tidy, or keeping a journal do not qualify as habits because they require effort and need thought. The key is to carefully choose the action you wish to develop into a habit. Maybe you want to avoid reading your email first thing in the morning or drink more water during the day. Be practical about the process. No matter what you decide, it will require persistence, self-control, and dedication. Charles Duhigg, author of The Power of Habit, said that the amount of time it takes will vary from person to person. It can take a day to form a satisfying habit like eating chocolate for breakfast, yet it might take much longer to try to go to the gym at 5 p.m. every day. Jimena Venguechea, a UX researcher and author of the forthcoming book, Listen Like You Mean It, added, reflect on what you're trying to achieve and why. Understanding the why will help you stay motivated when inevitable roadblocks to building new routines surface. So the second step is to prepare for roadblocks. Consider the reasons why you're still not used to using this behavior on a regular basis up until now. What has previously prevented you? Are shame or fear standing in the way? Or is it because of a lack of time? Familiarize yourself with your own blockers so now that you can quickly identify and manage them 
when they arise later on, because they will. Then Gochea said, Perhaps your hectic schedule has prevented you from going to the gym every day. Block 30 to 60 uninterrupted minutes on your calendar immediately to make sure this doesn't happen again. Perhaps you've just been lacking motivation recently. So find an ally with whom you can share your goals in order to hold yourself accountable. This person might be a dependable manager, peer, friend, lover, or member of your family. Make sure you share your ambitions, intentions, plans, and maybe even fears with someone who can support you and remind you of why you're taking this on in the first place. When the going gets tough, Vengochea said. According to research, you greatly boost your chances of success by telling someone whose status is greater than your own or whose opinion you value about your objectives. Now I know the topic gets more and more interesting from here, but I want to know if you've ever tried the steps mentioned so far. Let me know in the comments section below so that we can talk about it. So now, the third step is to start with nudges. You can incorporate practical actions or nudges to assist you in beginning your new routine. To get organized and started, you can choose one or all of the options like making a schedule, setting micro habits, or temptation bundling. In making a schedule, schedule regular times every day or every other day on your schedule to practice the behavior you wish to develop into a habit. Make sure you don't do too much at first. According to Vengochea, the chances are that if you start too soon and expect results right immediately, you will fail and give up before you even get started. Another choice is to experiment with microhabits, which are small changes you make over time to get closer to attaining your goals. So consider them as stepping stones, you know, that will take you to your ultimate goal. This final kind of nudge seeks to make obligatory tasks more pleasurable. The idea itself was developed by researcher Katie Milkman and her colleagues. And it's very simple. Take two activities that you don't particularly enjoy doing and combine them. Sounds crazy, but it works. So finally, the fourth step to making a habit stick is to show yourself compassion. As you go out on this road toward more conscious routines and ideally better habits, remember to be compassionate with yourself. Any long-term change will take time. That is simply the case. It will have its ups and downs. But if you've made it this far, you must be prepared and capable. Let your compass be the tools you've learned today. When you feel off course, which is very normal when trying something new, let them lead the way. So now that you know what they are, are you now more confident in making that habit stick? Comment down below so we can get the conversation going. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, click subscribe, and hit that notification bell to receive updates on our latest videos. If you want to watch more videos, head on over to our channel to see more from Money Talk. See you!